Hey, what's up? Good morning, B Men. My name is Danny Kalala. I'm a Facebook Live marketing expert and coach, and I'm here with the Brett Zachman Zach. And we've got some exciting and important things to talk about today, don't we? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, extremely important, like 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 eleven out of ten important. Yeah, it's um, yeah, like an eight on the Richter scale. It's a big time. You got rocked. Um, you got rocked over New Year's. Something happened to you that I think a lot of people can sympathize with. Uh, you lost somebody in your family. You did. You lost some somebody to your family in the worst way. Um, you lost somebody that completed suicide, which is horrific and and literally something B Man works to help is to make sure men's mental health is a priority and they feel connected, right? But yes, exactly. It it's happened to you. So community. talk about talk about what happened to you, and then talked about when you called me and everybody and said that you this was enough. Yeah. So, um, well, it just so happens that New Year's Day is my birthday, right? So first of the year, which is a nice thing. You know, it has pros and cons, right, gentlemen? And you get a party up until New Year's, uh, and up until midnight, and then you shift the, the party and you start partying for your birthday. And when I was young, it led to all sorts of problems because mm. I had a two-drink minimum, and now I have a two-drink maximum. <laughs> but that, that's the softer side, the sarcastic side. What happened this year is I've been a single divorce father for 15 years, okay? And our sons are 18 and 16. Now, they're teenagers, so they drive me nuts at times, but they're great young men. Um, we don't have any drug problems. We don't have any alcohol problems. We don't have any not going to school problems. We don't have any girl problems. So quite frankly, when they just don't do what I want them to do, the exact moment I want them to do it, that's not really a problem. That's called life. That's called development for them. But I cooked some dinner for the two of them and a couple of my younger son's best friends. And then where did they go? Well, they're not hanging with dad. Because what happens in teenage years, as all of us parents know, is I went over the last three years from superhero to hero to dad to part-time ATM chauffeur jerk. Right. Uh, now, that sucked for me because I loved the cape. The tights looked awesome on me. And, you know, undressing in the phone booth is super cool. But no, in all seriousness, you know, hanging with dad is just not that cool anymore. So they went on their way, and it just so happened that I don't have a lot of capacity to create social time. I used to have huge New Year's Eve parties. I don't do that anymore. Uh, I had asked a couple of people for a date. It fell through. So it's just me, myself, and I on the couch. And what happens to guys when that happens? Well, I'll be honest. I felt a little sad. I felt a little melancholy, a little down in the mouth, a little, gosh, you know, this isn't so great for me, 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 me. But I got through it. I watched a couple of movies. It was a very nice night. And then my sons and I did some very nice things for my birthday the next day. Now, on January 2nd, um, I heard the news. A uh, distant second cousin of mine posted some information about his younger brother. And his younger brother, while we were all ringing in the new year, decided that his time here on this earth was done. And I will walk you through that. First and foremost was I was absolutely 100% stunned, shocked. Mm -hmm. um, now, I hadn't heard, seen this young man in quite some time, but he had his stuff together. I mean, you know, he had his So it appeared. Yes. So I talk about this. I talk about the metaphor of the lottery ticket. And what I mean by that is a lottery ticket, when you look at it, has that silver lining, right, Dan? Mm -hmm. And it looks awesome. It's shiny. It's metallic. It, it, it's bling bling. And it's sweet. But you scratch below the lottery ticket surface, and if you don't have the winning ticket, well, now it just sucks. So that's kind of, I think, how men are leading their lives. That's how I led my life for decades of time. <coughs> it's keeping up with the Joneses. It's the comparison game. It's machismo. It's ego. It's external. Totally. And this is, you know, we're all putting on that game face, you know, in a much deeper sense. It's Thoreau's uh, great quote. Most men are leading lives of quiet desperation. And what I mean by that is behind the wizard's curtains, what's going on? Life. Yeah. Pain. Life. Pain. Life, pain, discomfort, yes, sadness, Absolutely. aloneness. The whole, you know, the whole spectrum, broad spectrum of emotions. And what have men been nature nurtured through their whole lives? An emotion. Oh, you had one? Don't do that again, Danny, right? Right. Duct tape that up in a box, put it in the corner, stick it up in the closet. And please, God, don't ever do that again because don't be like a woman. Don't be a wussy. There's another word that rhymes with that, but there might be ladies watching this, so we'll steer clear of that. 
You know, we try almost our whole lives with men to cut out any and all feminine traits or feminine energy because we're men. We're not supposed to have emotions. We're not supposed to experience emotions. Definitely, God forbid, don't ever show an emotion. And if you did that, please don't do that ever again for the rest of your natural born life. Now, this isn't realistic, gentlemen. Repressed emotions in men are killing us mm -hmm. figuratively but in this case, literally. So the old me would have done this, and I don't know if you resonate with this, Danny, and hopefully maybe some of you men out there do. We repress. And so how do we repress? Here's what it looks like. Mm -hmm. uh, Self-medicate. Numb out, distraction, denial. Um, we, have all, we have wonderful ways to do that, especially here in America. Drugs, alcohol, pornography, workaholism, a lifestyle, a sport. Being um, mean to your wife, being mean to your family, being mean, I uh, mean, it, it comes out in different ways and not just substance. It yeah. comes out in, in dominating somebody, winning, not wanting to lose, all kinds of things. At, and it, yes, it doesn't have to be super dramatic, all uh, almost theatrical. It doesn't have to be, well, I'm now a meth addict. Mm -hmm. it, it can just very simply be, you know, I was totally 100% passive aggressive with my romantic partner, my spouse. Uh, not just for a couple hours, but for like a whole week. Mm -hmm. And she had no clue or he had no clue what the hell was going on with me because I don't know how to talk about the fact that I'm hurting. So what hurt people do is they just hurt others. Or totally. disconnected and aloof and not, not making any kind of uh, positive communication with my son for a whole week, let's say. And let's pause there because what he's saying might be resonating with you at this moment. You might find yourself being in that, that moment of where you're so unhappy, you are mean to your spouse, you are mean to your family. You do take it, out, take it out on the people around you, which creates this deeper hole that you're in. And if you are feeling anything right now, then you're in the right place because we're sharing this with you to connect with you, to let you know you're not alone, to validate the way you feel, to validate those emotions, to say, we've done it. Yeah. We've experienced it. We know what it is. But there's a better way. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's the subtle but not so subtle lie. Whatever you're going through, while I'm struggling financially, while I'm struggling in my marriage, while I'm really disconnected or I've, I've got a child who's having extreme problems, or I just can't seem to figure out my vocation, I just got laid off, the pink slip, my boss is a you-know-what, an a -hole. Right. It, any and all – and. Sometimes, you know, we get the full house, right, guys? It doesn't just come exactly the way we want it at the exact time frame that we want it. Problems sometimes come in waves. And so you're sitting there and you're feeling overwhelmed. And if you're feeling that way, and then what men, I think, tend to do, our knee-jerk response is isolate. Okay, push back, get aloof, hunker down, turtle, put the head in the sand. That's what our instincts tell us, and that is absolutely the wrong thing to do. It hurts you. It might not feel like it hurts you. You might feel like you have the power when you do it. But what you need to understand is when you act that way or you feel that way and you, and you do that, you're costing yourself something. Absolutely. Every time. Absolutely. Happiness, a relationship, mm -hmm. peace, everything. It costs you every time. And, and you know why we do that, guys? We do that because it's comfortable. And mm -hmm. we do that because it's easy. And we do that because it's kind of hardwired into our DNA to recede that way. And so what I've learned about success in life over 12 years of personal growth and self-development is typically the best path is the one of most resistance, not the one of least resistance. Now, your brain doesn't want that, and your ego for damn sure doesn't want that. Your ego and your mind has spent 20,000 years figuring out the path of least resistance that's why receding, turtling, isolating feels comfortable and is easier because you don't have to deal with the emotions. You shut the emotions down. You shut them out. You completely deny them or you diminish them or you push them aside. So the old me would have figured out a way to do that. Mm -hmm. Now, I'll be honest, guys. I don't have a very addictive mentality. That, thankfully, that's just who I am. I've never had a problem with alcohol. I've never had a problem with nicotine or drugs or workaholism. However, and I'll challenge you, though. In the past, you uh, probably had an addiction to power, maybe an addiction yeah. to impact, maybe having that power addiction. Yeah. And that's, that's an acceptable thing. That's an addiction. You know? yeah. And yeah, I, knowing what I know about you is I feel like in the past you might have had an addiction to power. 
um, your whole story was, I got to be powerful. I got to be great. I got to be at the uh, top. Uh, I got to throw the big parties. You had an addiction to power. Some people abuse substances. So, but whatever it is that's missing inside you, you were throwing something else at it harder. I can't feel this way, so now I'm going to be that. Yeah. Oh, exactly. The keep up with the Joneses. I mean, how many of us do this, man? And most times we don't say it with our outside mouths. Yeah. But it's in the back of our brain, and we're playing the, the eternal and infinite comparison game. Oh, he has that car. I have this car. Oh, he has that house. I have this house. Oh, he has that woman. I have this woman. Got to be better. My kids aren't as successful. Oh, his kid is an Olympic hopeful. I mean, we do this constantly. Right? And we recognize it's exhausting. Oh, it's well, and it's, it's exhausting. It's debilitating. I mean, we're on Facebook, thanks to this expert right here. He's awesome at it. I'm not that great. So put your ego aside because, hell, Facebook is like a small country. What, there's a billion people on that? Do you think if you get on Facebook for even a couple of minutes, you could find someone uh, smarter than you, more good-looking than you, richer than you, taller than you, right? You following me? Mm -hmm. So it's a recipe for disaster. So me personally, I would check out. A lot of times for me, I don't have a, a life partner, and I've been a single divorced father for 15 years. Now, this doesn't make me happy to admit this. It's a little shaming. It's embarrassing. Yeah, I can hop online and create some entertainment and go to chat rooms and try to virtually substitute for the void of what I miss in a life partner and a friend, a companion, a lover, and a life partner with virtual interaction. And check out. And do things that you're not proud of, no, but dude. they happen. Yeah, you know. And I think you're not alone. I mean, I think I'm a man that clearly struggles with porn, and it costs me a closer relationship with my wife. Yeah, that's is that's a what it costs perfect me. Perfect example of distancing. That's what it costs now me. It's comfortable for us. It's easy for us. We're 100 mm percent -hmm. in control. So here's what I want to tell you guys: you can do this. If I can do this, you can do this. If Danny can do this, you can do this. Any man on the planet can do this. Now, can you snap your fingers and 12 seconds later or 12 minutes later or 12, 12 hours later, you're there? Mm -hmm. That's what America wants you to believe. Instant gratification, microwave society. You will instantaneously move from where you are today to a multimillionaire, where you are, to completely you know, harmonious life. No, guys, this was like 12 years Mm -hmm. So what happened for me for five days was I did. I stepped through all those emotions. First, shock and amazement. Stunned, surprise. Second, sadness, melancholy, uh, a little bit of depression. Third, anger, frustration, questioning, doubt. Fourth, righteous rage. Righteous rage. What the F is happening? Mm -hmm. how, how is this possible? Why are men killing themselves? And then finally, just sheer raw determination, where I say to Danny, oh, my God, we have to do better. I have to become more than who I am tomorrow than I was today. Step into leadership. Stop being passive. And let's be clear as he goes on. This is what we're asking for you. Yes. Everything he's saying right now. Yes. We're not telling you you're broken. We're not, we're not telling you you're, you're not enough. We're not telling you you're weak. We're telling you that there's, there's more. And if you want to be better, if you're the man that wants to be better, then all the stuff he's saying right now, pay attention. And so really quick, guys, because we do this, right? I just talked about comparison. So some of you almost automatically might be watching this, and you're doing this, the high sun, and you're like, OC and Danny and mm -hmm. Zach, and they have all their shit together. Sorry no. for that. And, uh, <laughs> uh, you no, got we your don't. poop in a group. and. And you're saying, well, poop see him. <laughs> you see it, you know, poop emoji. You're, yeah. you're sitting there and you're saying, oh, well, this guy's got everything together. He doesn't know my story and I have this or I have that. Yeah. And that's that immediate resistance. And what I'm trying to tell you is, so envision this. This is not me standing at a podium in a church, pounding my fist, <laughs> saying I've got my poop in a group. I'm the guy. I'm the savior. Follow me. You know, walk walk the way that Danny and I walk. No, right. this is more like we're in the Pepsi Center. There's 20,000 of us. My section is 120, row 10, seat J. I look to the left. I look to the right. I shrug my shoulders, and I'm like, I don't know, fellas. Should we try to do this together? Mm -hmm. I feel as messed up as the next guy. I don't have all the answers. I struggle. I get tired. I get weak. I get frustrated. I cry. I scream. So the old me, what would he have done? 
Oh, he definitely would have gone online. He definitely would have sought out some pleasure. He definitely would have sought out a very weak substitute for the very real piece that's missing in my life. I've been married once. I don't think I've honestly ever had a life partner. So here's you self medicated. That's exactly what yes. you did. We you numb self medicated, awesome right? At that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All humans, especially in this country at this time. And again, we're not shaming. This isn't shame. No, no, this no, is no. vulnerability to let you know that you're not alone. And and you might need to hear that today. Right. So the newer me, over time, right, gentlemen, over time, this this is what I do. By the end of Thursday, about dinner time, I texted our advisory council. So six or seven other guys got a text from me, um, sad and stunned and saying, hey, really bad day. This is the news I heard. Wanted to reach out. And all, every single one of them responded. How are you doing, brother? Thoughts and prayers, brother. We're with you. We believe in you. Do you do you need a phone call? What do you need? How can we support you? See, I'm not alone. And then I got together with one of them the next day. What did we do? We did what men oftentimes do. We just sat down for a beer at the end of the day and had a chat about life and had a chat about similar life experiences about how he's lost some people to suicide and how I just lost someone to suicide. And what did that feel like? And we didn't, you know, it wasn't psychotherapy 101, gentlemen. It was just a conversation. But it was a little deeper than did the Broncos win last week. Mm -hmm. It was more substantive. It was fellowship. It was friendship. And then I spoke to my sons, right? If I'm the leader of my family and I'm the father and I'm supposed to be trying to figure out how to, how to be an example to these young men who are 18 and 16, then I owe it to them to have that conversation and say, you know what? This is what happened. I'm so sad. I'm heartbroken. And does this happen for you guys? You know, you go to a big high school, 3,000 students. It's like a small college. Have, have, have there been students, have there been boys who are trying to become men who have taken their lives? And you know what? They showed up. They showed up. And they said, you know what, Dad? We've never met that side of the family. Do you want us to come to the service? I said, well, this is a weekend with your mom. It's okay, Dad. Do you want us to be there with you? Yeah, that's powerful. And the new me said, yeah, actually, I do. I do want you to be there with me. And if you can't say that to your children and it's more important for you to be strong and powerful and say, no, I got this, I shoulder this, that's not real. It's not. It's what you're telling yourself to do and what you're telling yourself to act. So the question of the day is, do you want to be better? Do you want to change your life? Do you want to be a more complete version of yourself? We're not telling you we're going to bring you in and sit you in a circle and you got to spill your beans and we're going we're gonna to try to fix you. No. We are not here to fix you. We are here to support you. Be Men is about joining the brotherhood of men and, and some women who want to support men to become better. If 2019 is a resolution for you to improve yourself, to have a better year, to clean up some stuff, then you're in the right place, and, and you need to get started. So tell men how they can get started. Yeah, absolutely. The journey of 10,000 miles to, is the first step. Nice guys don't finish last, fellas. I want to smash that, that old myth. No, it's true. Passive guys finish last. So you're sitting there waiting and wondering when the pennies from heaven are going to drop in your lap. That's not coming. So you got to pick yourself up by your bootstraps and just take that first step. Now, it doesn't have to be zero to Mach 2. You could just send me an email, zach at bmen.org. You could just Visit pop into our website. Yeah. yeah, bmen.org. You could, on the very first page, hit the subscribe button and just put in your email. Or you could put in a bunch of information, right? We've got a form on there, and that would start to get you further involved. We can invite you into an online Facebook community. Mm -hmm. You could do that the way I've done that for years where you're from a distance. It's all virtual. It's not too substantive. You just want to watch, maybe kind of be the voyeur or, you know, how far down the rabbit hole would you like to go? We have events every single month. This month, we, we're going to be on the 27th of the month. We're going to take the kids from Mount St. Vincent home out for bowling, pizza, and soda. And we're reintroducing a continuity program a program called Beers, Bros, and Bucks. So think of like happy hour with purpose, happy hour with intent, 
happy hour with a vision. Now, we're not promoting the drinking of beer. You know, if you have that issue, it's okay. Drink Show some water. Up. Drink Show some up. pop soda. I, drink nothing. It's just the idea of men coming together again the first Wednesday from 6 to 8 or 9 p.m. Sit down, meet a couple guys, say hello to Danny, say hi to myself. Be in a room of like-minded, purposeful, intentional, we're working on becoming extraordinary men. Because be men is about how do you become a better man? And, you know, at the end of the day, brotherhood is not a negative. No. Brotherhood means fellowship. And mm -hmm. fellowship means surrounding yourself with other people who care about you. And, the, and I guess I, I kind of want to say this. You matter. Totally. All men matter. Big time. Your job may not tell you that you're matter. Your boss may not tell you that you're matter. If you're not in a great relationship, your spouse or your partner, or your significant other may not know how to tell you that you matter. And Danny and I are here to tell you, you matter. You matter and you're human. Like, embrace it. You're human. Again, we're not telling you you're broken. You're human. You know, we're not meant to be perfect. We'll never be perfect. No, don't strive for perfection. It's a fallacy. But show up. Takes action. Do things to, to, to become a better person. Take 2019 as your year to improve, to look deep within yourself, and do it around some men that want to support you wherever you're at. And this isn't about vulnerability. This is about power. If you think everything we're sharing is making us look weak and vulnerable, well, the biggest people accept their smallness, and that's who we are. And you need to start accepting yours and know that the biggest people accept their smallness, and that's what this is about. So show up and go up and become the best person that you want to be in 2019. It's on you. It's not on us. We're just creating a space for you to become a better version of yourself. Absolutely. It's about New Year's resolutions. Take that first step. Be bold. We're here mm -hmm. for you. Absolutely, we're here for you. We want the best for you. And it's all about teaching, not telling. Awesome. So visit bmen.org. Become a part of the brotherhood. Join a group of men who want to become better. You say it better than me, the five pillars. Emotionally? Yeah. Emotionally, financially, mentally, physically, spiritually. The five pillars of male wellness. We, we, if you have a problem in any one of these categories, if you want to become better, problem is the wrong word. If you want to become better in any one of these five categories, then you're in the right place. So visit bmen.org. Become a part of the movement. Become a part of the group. Follow what we are doing because there's big things happening, and it's going to be coming to your part of your town. So um, anything else you got? Love you all. Love you all, guys. Enjoy your day.